Okay, in this lesson I'm going to talk about area between two, well, maybe not even two, area between curves. Now, back in Calc 1, you did the area under a curve. So, if you remember, if you had, um, let's look at the function, y equals x squared. Uh, that's a parabola there. And let's say we wanted to calculate or find the area, find the area under y equals x squared above the x-axis where x goes from, I don't know, let's just say 0 to 2. You would, so from 0 to 2, and we're finding this area, what you would do is that you would integrate from 0 to 2 the function x squared. So you get x cubed over 3, evaluate it, mm, that's a 3, evaluate it from 0 to 2, so area under that curve would be 8 thirds. And really what you're doing here is you are taking a, I, I consider this to be a little slice, so a little tiny slice that you would be adding up like a Riemann sum. So a little slice like right there where the top of that slice is y equals x squared, the bottom of that slice is y equals zero. And so really that little slice, I consider that to have a height of x squared minus zero. And that goes right in there. Okay, so now we're gonna add on to this a um, little bit a little bit harder. Um, so in the review, we wanted to find the area bounded by y equals x squared, x plus y equals 2, and the x-axis. Okay, so notice on all of these, I'm drawing a picture first. And I always do that. So y equals x squared, looks something like that. And then we've got x plus y equals 2. Now that's where y equals negative x plus 2. So the y-intercept over here is 2 and it would cross the x-axis also at two. And so that line <laughs> looks something like that. <laughs> Crosses it two there. And the x-axis. So right in here is all the area under the curve that we're, that we're looking for. Now, similar to before, we've got this area right in here where the top of that function is y equals x squared and then the bottom of that function is y equals zero. But the difference on this one, if you look to the right of this, the top function changes, the bottom function is still y equals zero. And so really what we have to do is split this into two different integrals. Now if we split it into two different integrals, we need to know uh, we need to know exactly where it's where it's split right there. Now that's going to happen that's going to happen right at that point right there, which is where these two curves intersect each other. So that would be where y equals x squared, so if y is equal to x squared, is equal to y, which is equal to negative x plus 2. So I set the two y's equal to each other. I've got to move everything over on that equation. I can factor that into, let's see, what does that factor into? x plus 2 and x minus 1. 
right? Let's verify it. Negative two times negative one is negative two plus two minus x. Yep, and we get the positive x. Okay, so from this, I've gotten x equals one or x equals negative two. And this spot right here, we're looking at the positive x values. So that would be the point where x is one. And where x is one, y would then be two minus one. That would also be one. Okay, so I'm splitting this integral into two different integrals. The first one is the integral from zero to one. My top function on that blue part, the top function just on the blue is x squared and the bottom function was zero. So I'm gonna subtract zero. I'm not gonna write that in there. And then I've got to add to it the part from the green integral. Now on the green integral, the top function was y equals negative x plus 2. And that green function is going from 1, this is from x equals 1, to x equals 2. Okay, so notice on these integrals x's, x's, my bounds were represented by x values. Same here, x is my variable, dx is telling me I'm integrating with respect to x, and my bounds are those x numbers, x variables, everything in terms of x. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate this. So if we, for the first one, we'll get x cubed over three, and we'll have to evaluate that from zero to one. And then the second one, let's see, that's a negative x squared over two plus two x, and I've got to evaluate that from one to two. So for the first one, I'll plug in one, one third, plug in zero, and that just subtracts zero. And the second one, when I plug in two, two squared is four, four divided by two is two, so minus two plus two times two is four, and then I've got to subtract when I plug in one. So minus a negative one half and then minus two. So it looks like I've got negative two, negative two and plus four. So I can cancel all those guys. And then one third plus one half, I can do one times two is two. Three times one is three and two times three is six. So I get five sixths. If you guys haven't seen that trick before on adding fractions, you can multiply down, multiply across, take the sign of the middle part, and then multiply the bottom. So it's like down, up, bottom. It always works. Okay, either way, we get five sixths out of this. Okay, so the area under that curve was five six. We had to break it up into two different pieces because our top and bottom functions, or the top functions, I guess I should say, were different. We had y equals x squared for part of it. We had y equals negative x plus two for the other part. Now, there's another way to do this integral. So I'm gonna, on the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna show you a demo. Let me kind of rewrite this. We were looking for the area between y equals x squared, x plus y equals two, the x axis. And I'm gonna graph it again. y equals x squared, y equals x plus two, and the x axis. So all the area in here is the area we're looking for. Now this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is sort of tilt my head to the right 90 degrees and relook at what's a top function and what's a bottom function. Before we were taking slices that were vertical and adding them, but I can take a slice that is horizontal and I can add all of those slices to give me the area under the curve. Now, 
When I do this, when I take the slice that's horizontal, I'm adding up slices over the y-axis. So when I do that, it means that my integral has to be dy now. My variables have to be dy. Okay, now one more time. When we were doing vertical, we were adding up over all the x's. Now we're looking at horizontal slices, and those slices were adding up all along the y-axis, and that's why we now have a dy. So now everything needs to be in terms of y. Now before, when we did this vertically, we did top minus bottom, big minus small. We're going to do the same thing, but remember that big is this direction on the x-axis. The most right function is the biggest. So this side would be the big side, this side would be the small side. And again, we need it in terms of y. All right, so this big side, we need everything in terms of y. So I need to actually re-look at these two functions, but I need them, I need an x equals this time. So on this guy, that's pretty easy, x equals 2 minus y. And on this other one, x would equal plus or minus the square root of y. Okay, so my big function, the big function, that's this one. It's the right-hand one. That right-hand one went with this guy. So that's the, that's the first one that will go there, 2 minus y. That's the big function. Minus, now the smaller function is this side. That one went with this function. Now if I choose, I have to choose plus or minus. And this is x is positive, which is right here, so it's the positive y value of that. So right there I would put root y. Okay, so this slice right here, I did big minus small, big function, minus small function, everything in terms of that y variable. And now I need my bounds in terms of y. So if I look at the y values for the bounds, the lowest one, well that's y equals zero. The biggest one right there, and we calculated that before, remember that point was one one, so the biggest y value is 1. Now isn't that nice? That's one integral before we had to do 2. But if we switch how we look at this, then we only have to evaluate one integral. Okay, let's do it. So integrate 2, that would be 2y. Integrate y, that's minus y squared over 2. And if we integrate square root of y, that's minus y to the 3 halves times two-thirds, and I have to evaluate that from zero to one. Okay, so I plug in one. Two minus one-half minus two-thirds, and common denominator here would be six, so I'd have, um, what would that be, twelve-sixths, right there, minus 3 sixths for that second one, and 4 sixths there. So this is going to be over 6. Let's see, 12 minus 3 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5. Whew, we get the same answer as we got before. Okay, so two different ways of looking at this. Um, so oh, in general here, so just kind of some, I'll call them hints to this. First thing, draw a graph. So first, draw a graph. Then the second thing that you want to figure out is do you want to do dx or dy? So you want to take a look at your region and figure out whether you have, um, I kind of think of it as like top and bottom functions or right and left functions. So this is kind of the same question as 
top and bottom functions? Or do you have, is it easier to do right and left functions? Um, and my other suggestion on this as well is to, is to draw, draw what I call a slice. Draw a slice of the region. See if you have the same top and bottom function. Do you have the same right and left function? So draw a slice and then see if you have the same top and bottom function. Or see if you have the same right and left function for for your representative region. Um, and if you have, let's see, if you have the same top and bottom functions, this is where you would do dx. If you have the same right and left functions, you would want dy. If you have dx, then all of your functions will have to be y equals something. If you do dy, and all of your functions are going to have to be x equals something. Um, and so down here, once you draw the slice, if you have the same top and bottom functions, you would want them to be functions of x. Those would equal y. And in that case, you would want it to... Let's see, you would want to use, in that case, dx. If you use the same right and left functions, you'd want to use dy. And then your functions, let me actually change that so that let me write it as a function of y there. Um, and you'd want those to equal x. Okay, so hopefully that will help. Again, draw the graph. It's really important on every one.